like literally. Oh, so you cheating on me now? No, nah, man, like like the 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 like super big podcast is like with with Bare Knuckle have been hitting me up about predictions for the fight card this past Friday and oh, I did so, a, so you're not just I, cheating on me. You got the big dogs hitting you up. I mean, some of some of the guys I've, I've known since like I even got into Bare Knuckle, like like uh Planet Hank, uh uh the 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 gentleman and the other one uh shit i i just been doing fight predictions and shit a lot this week oh, and shit, tough, tough. shit shit about to actually get get even busier once i drop once once i get my fight poster and be able to put it on social media and shit it's going to get even wilder cuz usually about that time when i start dropping my fight poster and shit like that you know that's when all the podcasts yeah. and and media stuff started hitting me all at one time and i had to you made time for that it's a little bit of a pain, ain't it? I mean, kind of not, but not really. Like when it when I first started doing it, mm-hmm. it, it it was it different for me and something to adjust to because I had never really done it before. Because I mean, I I had my own like little Facebook Live podcast with one of my one of my teammates, and you know we did a little thing called the BNB Show like every Monday or one random day during the week, and you know that that's what kind of kind of sort of prepared me for podcasts like like big podcasts and small podcasts and podcasts in general and media stuff because yeah. it it got me out of my comfort zone so like when when they first start rolling in and podcasts of the podcast of the podcast and radio interviews and media stuff started hitting me all at once it, it it messed with me a little bit because i wasn't used to all that like being jammed on me at once and I had to get a composition notebook to to schedule it and write it down. <laughs> and who I got to talk to at this time? Who I got to talk to at that time? And right, right, right. Yeah, it was hectic at first. Now, now it's like you, you know, probably it now. Yeah, man, I, I've probably done over a smooth over a hundred and some podcasts and media stuff by now. If if uh, if I stand corrected, it's been at least a hundred plus. So, like, as an athlete, like, you know, like, obviously most, you got the athletes that hate the, they hate the media sessions and the stuff, and you got the athletes that don't mind it, and you got the athletes that, like, embrace it and love it. Like, where, where would you say you fall in that category now that you're, like, it broke you out of the shell, you got to have a comfort zone, and you just do them. You, you prefer to get out there in front of the camera and answer the Hell questions, yeah. or? Hell yeah, I love it. Like, like, I love it. Like, my, my striking coach was one day literally told me, like, because at one point I was like, man, I, I don't really, I wasn't really too much on social media, but like resharing stuff and posting fight stuff here and there. And, you know, when I started getting around more and more people, my striking coach was like, man, you're made for cameras. You're made for this shit. You like that shit, don't you? And I was like, eh. <laughs> I was like that at first. And then once it started going and going and going and people want pictures and want to talk to me and stuff like that. I was like, hell yeah, I love this shit. That's why, that's why I like, I'm telling you, over the past two, two years, no, yes, over the past two and a half years, man, I've been more involved with social media stuff, especially right. like like on Instagram, because I used to not really post on Instagram, but like Nah, it's once, big, bro. It's big. You got a, to. Yeah, like once in a blue moon, like I just throw something out there on, on there like every once in a blue moon like some stupid shit but then you know now it's like you know I kind of put not necessarily my daily and my private life but like fight shit and car shit like yeah. that's, 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 that's my niche and you know I'll post clips of a podcast or something I've done shouting people out or something and that's about it even on like Facebook man like I try to stay as low key as possible and I'll just post fight shit or car shit or reshare a post or you know share something that my sponsors posted or something like that. I try to unless I'm doing like a podcast or something like if I'm doing a podcast or something with the media, I post the shit out of that stuff because I I love that shit now. Like, yeah. It, and it, it promotes awesome. like you. It shows like a different form of you and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah man like because I try to stay as as private as I can, right. unless it's about fight shit. But you know, I, it, it's cool because like it, it it blew up all at one time, and you know I get called a a celebrity now around here or wherever I go. But I don't I don't take it as that. 
Mm. I just take it as, you know, I finally let people know who I am. And right, people right, right. finally got to see me and me do what I do, win, lose, or draw. So, you know, but, you know, I take that shit in and I fucking love it. And, you know, if I have to do a podcast when I'm with my striking coach, he's like, oh, there you go. Hey, hey, hey. Go, they joke at you, right? They joke at you. <laughs> oh, there, there goes there goes Pretty Boy or there goes the Madonna. Like, I'll, I'll see, I'll get like jokes like that all the time. Once they see yeah. you pull the camera out and start recording, because I'm the media guy. Yeah. So, I'm like, oh, Pretty Boy is at it again because I got a camera out recording something. Yeah. Or if I go Instagram live when me and my striking coach are doing work to, you know, show the fans what I'm working on mm-hmm. or. You know, just you know, doing a few things, showing off or something. He'd be like, "Oh, there you go." Right, there right, right. <laughs> but it, you, it's cool. You, feel. you find it hard to like you. You have what almost fifty thousand followers across like all social media. I'm assuming uh-huh. like Facebook and like everything. Like I know your Instagram's popping like thirty some, right? Yeah, I got like thirty two thousand on on Instagram, and on my Facebook fighter profile, I got like. I don't really even be posted on that much because on that much, except for every once in a blue moon, because I only got like 2,500 followers on there. Oh, so course. you almost had like 40,000. Still a lot. That's still a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my, my, my YouTube just now starting to pop just a little bit. I just started a couple of weeks ago. I started out with zero followers. Now I'm up to like 26, 28 followers on there because I just been posting like little shorts and stuff to fill it uh, out. And so you... Do you find it hard to keep your personal life like suppressed from no, like the public, all. especially with bare knuckle blowing up? Like they they're getting huge now. Like so, do you find it hard between their press, their media, and everything you do to like suppress like your personal life? Not at all, because you know, growing up, you know, my mom always told me like if you ever you know become become something big and you know do something with yourself and do make it to a, a different level to where you know you get in the spotlight you got to balance your your private life and right right your, right your, right your other life and you know they say you can't you can't live two lives but you you have you kind of have to when you're an a professional well-known athlete or absolutely an absolutely or someone because you know you don't i mean it's cool to share family photos and and your loved ones and blah 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 but at the same point in time, you know, with me, I'm a protector. I like to pr- protect my loved ones as best as I can. As you should. And, you know, I don't, like I said, I don't like to show the world my personal life because my personal life is my personal life for a reason. Right, right. It doesn't, it, it, I don't, it doesn't, well, my mom always told me the the world doesn't need to see what you're doing with your family or doing with your daily life. They, you only supposed to show them what, you know, your profession is. You feel what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and that's and that's what I do. You know, I catch flack about it, but I mean, it's whatever. I mean, it, it's my life. You. Yeah, I got, yeah, I got to do what I got to do. And like I said, I'm a protector. And you know, my, my thing about being a protector is somebody says that that wrong thing. I'm going to find the location and we're going to have to solve it right then and there. You feel right, what I'm right, saying? right, right, right. Because right. that's one, that's one thing I do not play about is family at all, period. I'm, I'm heavy on the family. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Especially how internet trolls are these days. Yes, Almost fact. anything turns into a meme. You can post the most nicest thing in the world and someone's mm-hmm. got, always got something to say like every single time. Do oh so does that really play like a big time when you see like fighters and like stuff like that? So let's say you got a guy who uh let's say bare knuckle, very new sport, right? So mm-hmm. a lot of guys are making their name, making a scene. Do you see a lot of this from like outside, um, like a fans like opinions influence the decisions that get made behind the scenes when it comes to contracts, how much a guy should get paid, or like influence decisions in fights? Like, have you ever noticed that? Maybe not bare knuckle, but anywhere else. Like, like, yeah, like, man, I see that shit all the time. Like, how do you feel about that? Is that like really annoying, or is that just a sport and like you kind of got suck it up, or do you wish like it was better? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you know, social media runs the world these days, and people are going to say what they want to say, and mm. it is it, it's annoying at times, but at times it's funny as fuck. But sometimes it's it's copacetic, cool, calm, and laid back, and you know, I'm. I, I'm 
middle ways with it, I should say. You feel what I'm saying? But yeah, I know it, it's just a part. It's a part of the world we live in these days. You feel what I'm saying? Facts. It's unfortunate. Ah, it's, you, I guess you gotta take with the good with the bad because with that, I mean, you can blow up, and then Facts. nowhere now you're making money. You gotta start living on on uh, YouTube and stuff. Like they look at Juju Smith Schuster. He may not be the best football player. But you can clown him for being a TikTok boy, a YouTuber, but he, he getting retires. paid off that shit though. He retires. He got the bag. He secured a bag. Facts, and he getting that extra bag off like, like the the Instagram and and the TikTok and the YouTube. You All know right. what I'm like, saying? Every, everyone's saying, "Oh, TikTok boy," but I, and now he got a ring. He can retire yep. tomorrow and go secure his bag online, and he got his NFL money. And yep. He get an NFL pension, and he got all pff, he fine. Facts, like. Like that, that shit's weird. I think about that sometime, and you know, I'm I'm a person of always being open and broaden my horizons to new things. To, like I said, broaden my mind and learn something new. And I I, I like shit like that. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yo, so like, would you would you would you box? Would you do boxing? I mean, would boxing be like a far ass sport? Or are you kind of all in the bare knuckle right now? Man, look, I'm I'm a multi sport athlete. I tell people this all the time. I I grew up playing multiple sports and. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I do boxing. I, I love, bo- well, I'm not gonna say I love boxing, but hey, we might, I like, I like we, boxing. We might have to get you on a card, my guy. I might have to see what, what it'll take to get you on a card. Man, if if there's any card that I would really want to be on this year, because I'm putting it into manifestation, I was talking to my my striking Ooh. coach about it Friday. Oh, we got I a would, gem coming up. I would love. Love, love, love to be on the undercard of the Davis versus Garcia fight card. Oh, April 22nd. I would love to be on that fight card. I don't care what way, as long as I got time to prepare for it. Right, right, I, right. I would love to be on that undercard. And you don't, you, you don't care who the opponent is. You just sign the contract. You just sign me up, right? Look, long's the, long's the, the, it's not really about the money for me. It's just the fight. It's about it's. I love to fight. I'm a fighter, you know. I, I've grown up doing this. I've done this for a long time now, and I'm at my stage of life where this is all I want to do. I don't want to do nothing else but fight, 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 fight. Right. I, I feel I feel better, and my confidence goes through the roof when I get to fight, fight, fight. Who would you want to uh, fight on the undercard? You got a name it, you'd want to call out? It doesn't matter. Oh, it don't matter. As long as I got time and preparation for it. That's a beast move right there. As long as I got at least four to eight weeks to prepare for it, mm-hmm. even if it's four to six, mm-hmm. I'd be happy with that. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, you know, like I'm highly active in the gym. Even if it's like one week out, two weeks out, somebody drops out and they'll be like, what's your weight? You know, this, this, and this. And would you accept? Fuck yeah, I would because I know I would be prepared for it because of, you know I'm a highly active in the gym. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah, you highly active right now. You training right now? How is your training going? My training for this this upcoming fight is going great. Um, I'm right on track to with my weight cut. Only got 15 pounds left to cut, so I'm right on track. I got exactly what's today. Today is the damn. What's today? 26. Today is the 26th. I got exactly four weeks till fight time, and I'm feeling happy. I'm feeling blessed. Um, my my confidence and my striking is through the roof right now. And you know, I, I've got some some new things started in my area with you know everybody retraining together again, like cross training a lot. Mm-hmm. And you know, every Sunday we'll switch a gym and have a Sunday fun day. One Sunday I'll be at my gym. One Sunday I'll be at another person's gym. Well, and the following the group going with it. Yes, sir. I mean, oh, it, I, I I feel like the past couple of years, you know, we kind of fell off with that. But since I we've been rebranding it back and doing it, it's made. I'm telling you, it's made a lot of people, a lot of us look and feel a whole lot better with with fighting. And you know, like I said at the end of last year i'm bringing the old cocky arrogant me back and i feel highly blessed and uh, fucking feel great about it like uh, oh. i feel i feel like i'm just now fighting all over again i feel fucking great so b max is gonna be in the press conference hyping up the shit out of a fight he gonna be like are you talking like 
like, take me through that. Like, what's that B-Max like? Like, are you, like, not maybe, like, Conor McGregor level, like, hyping up a fight? But is it, like, nah, like, you got, like, I don't know. Like, you got, like, a different, like, humor side of you for, like, a press conference. Like, what does that entail? Man, like, usually, man, doing, like, press conferences and stuff like that, man, you, you've you done, done one with me. I'm usually chilled, mm-hmm. laid back, and, you know, humble. Right. You were quiet that day. Like yeah. a soft killer. You you was one of those guys. You were one of the guys, I swear to God, in my head when I first met you. You know how like everyone gets like the first original appearance and stuff like that? I was like, I, I saw you. And I was probably like 50 feet from you. I was yeah. like, that, that's Brian. And between like the lights and stuff, I was like, maybe it's not Brian. But, and I walked around, looped a bit, got the better angle. That's Brian. I walked up. As I'm walking up, I'm like, yo, this man like – really quiet right now. You weren't talking to no one at the time. I was like, this guy's like silent killer. Like you were the type of kid that like, if someone like pushed you the wrong way, ASAP rock, you turn around, break a jaw. And that's, <laughs> exactly, that's that is exactly me. Like, because I, I'm usually, I don't like confrontations. Well, I don't like to start confrontations. Let's just say that. You like to I don't finish like, it. You like to finish it. I don't like to start confrontations unless I'm feeling some type of way and there's been some back and forth. And then I'm the person kind of person on site means on site with me. Or if I have to pull up on you, I have to pull up on you and we got the handle. Like I'm okay. usually cool. I'm usually a past couple of years. I've been a cool, calm and collective and chilled and humbled. And that's hurt me a lot to, to be quite honest. And, you know, when I was, a little rowdy and didn't give a fuck about shit. Yeah. And cocky and arrogant and, and was my, let's just say, I've wrestled most of my life, so you know how wrestlers facts. are. Big facts, big facts. Me too, I, me I'm, too. I'm, I'm bringing that shit back out of me. And like I said, I feel some people say I'm being an asshole right now, but this is who I got to be with. That's what you got to be. My, my mindset, man, like. Like I, I feel so much better about myself. I I hate that I'm like this because I, I I'm the the asshole breaks out when it shouldn't break out sometime or you know some people around me I'm a I'm a douchebag too. But mm-hmm. you know getting ready for a fight, man. Like that's my mental. I got to to be in my correct mind state. You feel what I'm saying? And I think that being humble going into these past fights the past couple of years just hurt me in a lot of ways, man. Yeah, it brings a dog out of you. It's a different nature. My boy that Naeem is. goes by you son now. Shout out to him. He uh he always calls me a genuine asshole as of lately. Cause like I just like not I wanna like act out, but like I'll just say something. If I'm feeling on my mind, I say it. A hundred, like people say that, right. but like ask anyone, like you may really not like it. And I like even with my girlfriend, I'll look at her I'll be like, listen, like you're not gonna like it, but like this is how you're like this is what's up. And I'll say it, I'll give you the warning. And I, I mm-hmm. so I get what you're saying because when you have that the asshole side of you that comes out versus the humble side, the humble side kind of like tames that monster. The yeah. asshole side, like you're flirting with it, like you're showing mm-hmm. phases on a scale from one to ten. You might be at the four, you might hit a six, but you're going like you you see it like once it pops off that leash, it's a full on ten. You facts, man. And one thing about me, I fucking hate to argue with the passion. Like, I don't like arguing with people on the internet. I don't ha- like arguing with people in real don't life. I time for it. Because I, I used to have a real bad anger problem, and I never thought before I reacted. And it got me into trouble several mm-hmm. times in my lifetime. And the last time that I didn't think before I before I went into action, it, it actually got me, you know, the, I'm going to let you in on my, my personal side for a second, but it actually got me in trouble and got me put on probation for two years and you know i had to do the anger management classes i had to do that thing and sit there and tell them why i'm there this that and the third i had to do it twice a week and that shit cost me a lot of money man like a right. lot i can imagine and, i can imagine you know i chilled out after that though because you know I, I learned my lesson and blah 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 you know rehabilitation as they would say and you know i haven't lit my temper really get the best of me except for one time after that I, after one of my fights i felt like i literally got robbed by the referee i tried to fight the referee refight refight the guy i tried yeah. to fight everybody around me like like even my coach had to like literally grab me over, like chill the fuck out yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> and you know, I, I right now I feel like that has came out of me a little bit again because I, I get I get pissed off at the stupidest shit right now. Maybe and... not that side, but in the ring, let it. I want to see like I don't know, like that grit, like maybe like all right, hypothetically, like, well, I got thinking about it sometimes, right? Like the best way to hype up a fighter. Cause I work with fires now. Like, what's the like the best like way? Like, think about like a badass moment where they can get hyped up, and like you sitting down the thing. Like, maybe you walk to the corner and punch the shit out that like the pad in the corner or some shit. I don't know. Let the, yeah. you, I can't wait to. Now you got me hyped. I feel like we selling <laughs> the next fight already. Wait, hold on. Right. Where is your next fight? Is there a location? Are we allowed to say that yet or nah? I mean, I could drop the location. I mean, I'm I'm pre- I'm pretty sure a lot of people dealing with my social media and, and seeing what I've been posting lately can kind of figure out that I'm finally f- being able to have a full fight camp and being able to fight in my home state for the first time since 2019. Oh, so, in Virginia? Yes, sir. And it's going to be lit. I mean, it lit. He said like, four weeks time. So that's a month. Yeah. And, you know, I, I haven't really put it out on f- social media yet because I'm still waiting on my, you know, my fight poster and the link to, to oh, sell. Yeah, let that tickets. be the official drop, baby. Yes, sir. But, you know, like, you know, people can kind of tell that I've been in fight camp for a minute, for a, a little minute now, you know, cutting my weight and stuff. Because at first I was just waiting to see if they were going to put me on the on the fight card. So I started my weight cut and started fight camp a little early just in case. Ooh, that's how you so know he ready. That's how you know he hungry. So when they finally gave me a name, I was like, hell yeah, it's game time. So I'm dealing with that. But, you know, I actually got a new opponent like this week and I got my contract and stuff. So my contract is officially signed and I got a different opponent, but it's going to be the same ending regardless. Oh, shit, okay. Oh, Dude, there it is. Busy. There it is. It's coming. <laughs> See, that that's the side of me that people haven't seen in a long time. There it because is. Usually, like I said, I've been too a lot of humbled for the for the past couple of years because of the big opportunities I, I've gotten. But there's no humble Mister Nice Guy anymore. So I like it, that. I like that. It, it's people take advantage time. of that humbleness too. You know what I mean? Yeah. People take advantage you, of it. They're gonna take that for a weakness. Facts, man, and I've seen it a lot with people that I was around and have been around, and cutting those people out, mm. fa- family included. Friends included, mm. old teammates included, I feel so much fucking better, man. Like, and being the original me coming into the fight came, being fucking vicious and nasty and talking shit. Yeah. And, oh, he about to get be reckless with that. Like it. Like, but yeah, man. I don't, like, like I said in a podcast, my first podcast that I I did this year. I'm back on my bullshit. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> That that's that's my that's my that's the New York blood in me. I'm back on my bullshit. You feel let what I'm go. saying? Let it go. Let it loose, King. Let it loose. But yeah, man, like the the original guy that I was supposed to fight, he backed out. I guess he couldn't get medically ke- cleared, and I guess he's retiring now. So it is what it is. M- moving on. Mm-hmm. I, I I got a new body to beat up now, so I, I'm good with that. You feel what I'm saying? There you go. There you and, go. And I'm happy to be able to fight in my home state, like with a full fight camp for the first time since 2019. So I, I'm I'm happy and I'm lit, man. Like I'm literally going to show the fuck out. Right, right, right. As you should, bro. As you should. Listen, wait, hold on, wait. So you're gonna like when it when it comes to like um fighting in your home state and then you traveling, does it take away more from that fight? Not from the fight, but from like uh uh Support, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if people are coming to your spot, you expect, like, mad people to get tickets, right? And be there because it's right there in your hometown. It's right in the backyard. But when you're, like, across the country and maybe not as many people can go get tickets, like, how does that fluctuate with you mentally as a fighter? How do you handle that? Ah, maybe you may not even tune in. Maybe a lot of people I want to see may not get to see me fight. Like, does that ever bother you or hit your mind at all? My thing is, you know, I've got a good fan base now. Like my fan base has grown through the fucking roof. When when I first came on to even being on Bare Knuckle and trying to get my name out there, I only had like nineteen hundred followers on Instagram. And now it's popping. 
I was just a simple local local guy mm-hmm. and you know even with that you know if we had an event here in the city that I'm in I would sell a lot of tickets or you know I'd work out, work out a deal with my teammates hey if y'all you know everybody sells tickets you know we have a good time selling tickets of course we we have the event jumping as always in, in the area I'm taking everybody out one day during the week or after the fights and, and it's on me you feel what I'm saying right, right, and right. man with with growing my name and getting it bigger and fighting on pay-per-views and fighting on TV and shit. Like sometimes I feel some type of way about it, but now that I've gotten the following that I got, you nah, know, he don't give a fuck. No, I, I, I do. I do give a fuck <laughs> uh, about certain parts of it. Like I can go to anywhere and fight. People are going to tune in. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Win, lose, or draw. People are going to tune in because, some people are going to get, you know, buy it on pay-per-view to watch me, you know, win, lose, or draw. Or, you know, any city that I go to, there's going to be at least one to two fans that buy a ticket just to see me fight and bring people with them to, and sell tickets. Especially in, like, since I fought in Florida the most, man, if I go to Miami or Tampa or somewhere, people are going to buy the shits out of tickets. Right. If I'm on, the, You know, even though the hometown guys are on the fight cards, me being an out of towner and coming to Florida, that's where a lot of my followers are from. Now that I can see that shit on Instagram and I can see like who follows me, what states you know follow me the most. That's Florida where I first saw you fight in Florida. Florida. Yeah, that's where I first saw you. Facts and you know people show up. Like I've taken so many pictures and signed so many autographs with people in Florida. Like I can be anywhere in Florida and sell tickets. And people will tune in. I could be anywhere in the world right now and still be able to sell tickets or pay-per-views. But what does kill me and makes me feel some type of way, just to be quite honest, that people that say they ride for me or or they're Ooh, a homie sad. or a family member and say and they support me on social media, but don't support me when it comes to watching me across that TV. You feel what I'm saying? Right, 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 that, right, right. And then, yes. then some people have the nerve. Did you win? When did you fight? When is the fight? After I done already fought, that that pisses me off. It makes me feel some type of way, right? And I and I, you know, I have to hit the people with the same shit. If you looked really looked at my social media, you would know when the you fight was. Know. You you would watched it, and you would have seen whether I won had a win, loss, or a draw. You feel what right. I'm saying? It so is- and that, so okay, that aspect I do care, but at the same point in time, as long as I get to do what I'm doing and the ones that matter are watching plus my fans and my followers are watching. That's what balances it out for me and makes me cool, cool at the end of the day. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But when I get home and motherfuckers blow me up talking how the fight go, if you didn't watch it, I, I'll look at it and keep it moving. I will not answer it back. Just saying. Yeah. No, that's, bro. I actually had this conversation hours ago with my grandfather promise you um because i was getting tight um it's 2023 we are so advanced in the form of technology that like you should not be able to go if unless you really care about someone right you should not be able to go um like even a week without saying oh i haven't talked to you in a minute a simple text takes two seconds whether or not you intend to have a full hour conversation sit there and text like you would a, a female your girlfriend just say Yo, bro, how you doing? Hope all is well. You know, it's so fast, and people just like mm-hmm. somehow, somehow still skim over it, and it's crazy because it's like you probably see it too when you win. Everybody's yo, B Max, B Max, bro, good stuff, good stuff. Back, back, you back. lose, and it's like crickets. Yeah, you know like, what I mean. Yeah, and you know, certain some people be like, man, you know, keep your head up. You know, you got it on the next one. We, we know you train hard, so this, that, and the third. And then those, those ones that that are supposed to be your, your day ones, crickets, you feel crickets. what I'm saying? Those, those are the first people that should be the first ones to either call right. or, or, or message you, you feel, to me. Right. Thanks. Especially if, if we're like like I, this and, and we're supposed to be like like definitely day ones. That, that gets to me sometime, but at the end of the day, you know, I know the kind of person that I am. I ride ride for mine. I'm a protector, and I'm there for family and friends and teammates. 
I, I'm heavy. Like I said, I'm heavy on the family. Right. Your fa- fam- family part, whether it's a friend, teammate, or my actual real family, I'm heavy on that. But like I said, it does make me f- feel some type of way. But, you know, now that it's balanced out with the following that I have and, and get support from fans and followers, too, amongst the, 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 the ones around me that are actually, you know, showing me the love and support that I need as a fighter mentally, right. physically, or, you know, s- sliding a message or something or, or a phone call. That, that's what it is for me, you feel what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Bro, that's how I, I mean, at the end of the day, you got, like you said, keep it moving. You have to be you. It's, right. They're going to be them. Yes. So, and I don't think people understand how hard it is, whether you're MMA boxing or bare knuckle. Like, I see it all the time with my boxing. It's hard. No no fights are easy. In my opinion, really, for the most part, unless you're coming, you know, there's always, like, time where people have, like, them easy bouts. But realistically, when you're on that big stage, like, where you're at, it's telling like, no fight really is an easy fight. Facts. You're and and people, I don't care if somebody is a, is a, as they call them, a can fighter or whatever, if they're on the same level as you, in the same place as you, anything can happen. Right. Anything, anything can happen. happen. I don't care if they can or can't fight. My thing is, I one, I do not duck people. Two, I never pick and choose. And three, whatever name that I get across the board, I'm not going to sit there like, no, I don't want to fight that person. I'm going to be like, hmm, look at the name, talk to the people that need to be told about it, talk to them, see what their opinions on it. If we all agree, I'm going to take the fight. But if we all don't agree, I'm still going to take the fight, but I'm going to think about it for a second to be be able to pick, not pick and choose, but to pick the things that I can exploit or the things that me is stronger than that person. And then sign sign those dotted lines, you feel what I'm saying? I'm never going to not back out of a fight unless I die or I'm injured. Right, right, right. No, absolutely. You feel what I'm saying? I think people discredit that too much. It kind of bothers me sometimes, especially now that I do promotion and stuff. Like, I think it it really bothers me because a lot of times the people that discredit you are the ones that can never do it, right? If they step in the ring tomorrow, they they gas out just off of, like, bad endurance. Mm -hmm. But, like... On that level, like, no fight's easy. Jake Paul and Tommy Fury just happened. Tommy Fury won, split decision. But if if, if re- reality, if everything is supposed to be as easy as these people crack it up to be, Tommy Fury being the pro boxer, Jake Paul fighting a pro boxer for the first time, Fury should have scrubbed the floor with him. But he went to a split decision. What do you think about right. that? Did you have, like, a – did you care about that fight at all? Or Jake I mean, Paul or anything like that? You know, you know, I got my ties to it. Um – I got my ties to it, so I can't wait to watch some highlights about it and see, see what's up. But, you know, I will fight one of the Paul brothers if given the chance. But at the same point in time, you know, Jake, he takes it serious. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? He takes it serious and puts in the work. So, I mean, you can't you can't doubt that at all. Right. right. And even if he does go against the person that he went against, Tommy Fury, he, he still done it. A lot of other people wouldn't do that. You feel what I'm saying? Do it. People won't step in. I think I think a lot of fighters get discredited because, like, I don't think people understand how hard it really is to do what you do and get out there in front of a crowd. You know what I yes. mean? And stuff like that. So I want to hit you. With that being said, I want to do a little game with you where it's kind of like rapid fire. You cool with it? Bet. I'm like, with quick, it. I'm going to hit you with, like, quick questions. And, like, we'll see. I'm, I'm going to say, like, uh, I'm just going to hit you with, like, um, with uh, just random ass questions, I'm gonna see how you just handle it, how you handle it, or how you answer to it. All right, ready? Bet. All right, cool. Bare knuckle MMA or boxing. Bare Which knuckle. One? Bare knuckle. Oh damn, he's hungry. Yo, does that really like hurt that bad? Like, how is it like? Maybe two days after a fight, or the next day, if if you really put the paws on somebody. But I'm still a huge MMA guy. I love my MMA return coming soon. But you know, I, I'm heavy on the bare knuckles because it changed my life mm. in more ways than a lot, a little. You feel what I'm saying? Does it hurt more? Like, I always assume boxing would hurt more. I just said rapid fire, but, like, now I'm kind of actually curious. So, like, bare knuckle, you get hit straight with the, obviously, hand. But boxing, you know, got the hand wrap, the pads, the tape, and then the glove. But, like, what one really like, hurts more? Is it the glove? I assume the glove. Or is it that bare hand? Let's just say I've broken my hand in MMA, and it fucking sucked. Oh, shit. And... I've done, you know, of course, bare knuckle all this time. I've never broken my hand, knock on wood. But my, your hand is sore for a couple of weeks, but still, like, 
it's not as bad as people think it is, to be quite honest. Okay. All right. Oh, damn. I was just really curious because I'm like, honestly, oh. to be quite honest, I think my hands hurt worse after my Chad fight than any fight I ever had, except for the time that I broke my hand from, from straight boxing for that long. I think my hands hurt worse than after a bare knuckle fight. Mm -hmm. Who is a dream fight for bare knuckle that you want to get in the future? Um, Once I work my way back up these rankings, mm -hmm. whoever the champion is. Okay. Just to be quite honest, that's always the end goal for anyone that's taking it serious. So, the champion or whoever it is, whenever I get back up these rank rankings, start working. I'm starting going to start now with this next fight. And when I ever got get to the point where they, hey, we got a title fight for you. Okay, bet. That's where I want to be. Bet. Where's your merch at? Where can people get, like, sh shit to rep you? Your shirts and, like, do you have any of that out yet? I mean, I got my, uh, my Who is Brian Maxwell shirts out with the chat on the front. I actually only have a few of those left, so yeah. <laughs> I I got some other things coming with that. Mm -hmm. I got my I got my trading cards out. So if you I can send you a link and you can post it if you want. And do that. Um, do that, absolutely. And and it's only a few left because when I dropped them, like the special edition ones, they sold out quick as fuck. So I think those are sold out. Um and I got some few regular like, you know, trading cards left. On, on the site that I that I I'm collabing with, so once those are sold out, I think I'm going to drop some some more of that the special edition ones and the one over top top of that amongst dropping some some bare knuckle ones too. So you know we're going to see how that goes, and I'm actually uh going to resurface uh the clothing clothing fighter brand that me and my two other partners used to do Savage Combat Sports. So that's gonna be revamped at some point this year. So that's gonna be dropped. That that was dope. Hey, dope. Well, man, I appreciate you having this on the show. All right, oh, shit, damn. It's that late <laughs> over <day>. here. <laughs> hey, bro, you on Brian Boy Media now, bro? But now yes, I appreciate sir. your time, man. Appreciate you for coming out, and we're gonna be talking to you soon. We'll be talking to you soon, Camp Champ. Good luck in, in your fight.